before you even start palpating, you can always just stop and assess how they're standing. Um, it's not uncommon for horses to rest a hind limb, like rest on the toe. It is uncommon for them to rest a front leg. If you have a horse that's holding up a front leg and he's not pawing, he's just kind of knuckled over, that's going to be abnormal. So right away we can say with Go Gal, she's bearing weight on all four of her legs. She's not resting any of them, so that's a good place uh, to start off. Because we're just doing the lower part of the leg today, I'll just kind of let her know I'm here and then I'll head straight down to the lower part. Um, so, this is the accessory carpal, this bony prominence on the back of the leg, so very easily visible um, and palpable. Um, the carpus, it's a complex joint, as you saw in the skeleton, there's a lot of bones in there, so it's actually made up of three rows, like two rows of bones and three joints. Um, if you had heat or swelling or even a pocket of fluid on the front of this joint, that would suggest that there might be something going on with your carpal joint. Uh, one, of the, one of the joints of the carpus. Um, as I run down, I kind of put my hands wrap around and just kind of slowly run down. And that way you can feel if you've got uh, any abrasions or cuts. Um, you can just, uh, you can feel easily the two splint bones. They just run a little bit behind into the sides of the cannon bones and you can feel the, the end of the splint bones, which is called the button, is very easily palpable in the horse leg. Um, and then uh, we get down to the fetlock. Um, when I'm taking digital pulses, like I said, I like to do it back here. If you are having trouble finding the spot, you can kind of press your hands in hard and just pull them back, and you will feel something pop between your fingers. If there's a nerve, artery, and vein that run together, so it's sort of three little ropey structures. And when you do this, you can feel them pop, and then that will tell you you're in the right spot. And then, um, and then after that, um, when you're feeling for the digital pulses, remember that you should have a very, very light touch because you don't want to actually block the vessel. You just want to, you know, have your hand over top of it. And in her, um, she's getting a little impatient, but um, I can feel very, very faintly. I can feel vibration under my fingers, but I can't feel a clear pulse. So that I would call normal. And then again, there is this other area in the front of the, um, in the front, I know. Uh, in the front of the pastern where you can find it sometimes, but I don't find it as easy. But that's where the artery comes back around and uh, sort of comes around the front here. And then uh, when I'm palpating, I will also look for heat in the hoof wall. Um, you can compare both sides without actually getting in front of her, obviously, in case she moves. But comparing both sides, you can palpate around the coronary band um, if you've got an abscess, sometimes they rupture out of the coronary band. In really severe cases of laminitis, where you have sinking or rotation of the bone, then you can also feel heat and oozing, and, and you can almost feel a little bit of a depression up here above the hoof wall. Um, and then we've got the heel bulbs back here. Um, I'll also point out, I'm sure most of you know this, but there's also a structure here called the chestnut which is a little vestigial digital pad. And then we have the air gut, which is another little um, horny piece that you'll feel at the very bottom of the uh, fetlock, and um, just not to mistake it for mud or for an abrasion or anything. And that's basically it. Um, what I'll often do when I'm palpating is to pick up the limb as well. I, I find, because the tendons are, are tight when they're standing, but when they're not wearing bearing weight on the leg, they are softer, so you can feel here, if you pull your hand up, you can feel three ropey structures, so that would be your suspensory ligament, uh, deep digital flexor, and superficial digital flexor tendons. And you'll feel them pop like one, two, three. And I mean, with a normal horse, you know, you can go down and you can look for spots of tenderness, see if they're reacting. Um, she's not reacting to any of this palpation. You can also feel the splints really well in this position when you don't have those tight tendons over top. So it's kind of interesting. Um, over top, you've, you've got your uh, carpal joints opened up here too, so you can feel there's a big, a couple of big extensor tendons that run over here, and then you can feel the little joint pockets there. <laughs>